Alright, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting 512. <clears throat> so 512, this is the same thing as 16 times 32. And now I can write this as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 16 times 32. Now 16 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 and 32 is equal to 2 to the power of 5. So this is why I rewrote 512 as 16 times 32, because now two to the, I have 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5. And notice how we have another base of 2 over here, 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x. So now I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5. Now all my terms are bases of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So right here we have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5, which is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4 plus 5. And 4 plus 5, that's equal to 9. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 9. And also, instead of doing all that, remember over here how we had at the start 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x equals 512. 512 is equal to, well, we know that 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So 512 is 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 4, which is 2 to the power of 9. So we could just set up the start that 512 is equal to 2 to the power of 9, but we, but some people don't know that 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512, so that's why we have to do all of that. So now going back here, we have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 9. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, we can say that m is equal to 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x, and n is equal to 9. So because these two bases are the same, this means that 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 9. Now, 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So now I have 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 3 squared. And now again, I can use this property because both my bases are the same. So this means that 4 to the power of x is equal to 2. And now 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So I get 2 squared to the power of x is equal to 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x is going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is 2 to the power of 2x. This is equal to 2. Now, I'm going to use this property again. 2 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. So then, because these two bases are the same, I get 2x is equal to 1. And now... If I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 1 half. So now, to check, my original equation was 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. So I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. 
and we said that x is equal to 1 half. So I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of 1 half is equal to 512. Now I'm going to work my day way down from the top. So I first start with 4 to the power of 1 half. Now 4 to the power of 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is equal to 2. Meaning I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 512. Now from here, 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9. So I have 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512. And finally, 2 to the power of 9, that's equal to 512, as we already said at the start. So we get 512 is equal to 512. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation a squared minus b squared is equal to 49. So to solve this, I'm going to use the property that states that if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. In this case, a squared minus b squared, a is x and b is y. So this turns into a plus b times a minus b is equal to 49. Now from here, I can rewrite 49 as 7 times, or sorry, not 7, 49 times 1. 49 is equal to 49 times 1, so that's true. And this I can rewrite as 7 times 7. Now, we obviously know that a plus b is going to be greater than a minus b. So keeping this in mind, this means that we can't, we can't rewrite a plus b times a minus b as 7 times 7, as 7 and 7 are equal. So this possibility is out of the way, and 49 times 1 is the only possibility here. Meaning we're going back to a, time, a plus b times a minus b is equal to 49 times 1. So, because a plus b is greater than a minus b, we can say that a plus b is equal to 49 and a minus b is equal to 1 because a minus b, 1 is less than 49 and a minus b is less than a plus b. And this is also in the form another, a number times a number. So, and notice how this is equal to a number times another number. So, we can say that a plus b is equal to 49 and a minus b is equal to 1. So what we have here is a system of equations, and I'm going to add these system of equations. a plus a is 2a, b and negative b cancel out, and 49 plus 1 is 50. So I get that 2a is equal to 50, and if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out, and I get a is equal to 25. Now that we know that a is equal to 25, remember how we said that a plus b is equal to 49. So this means that 25 plus b is equal to 49 and b is equal to 49 minus 25, which is 24. So a equals 25 and b equals 24.